50% of life has been lost in the last 100 years, with 47,000 species currently threatened with extinction. Having worked with some of these critically endangered species, I don't want to see them gone for good. But what if they didn't have to? With recent advancements, extinction could become, well, extinct. De-extinction has gathered so much attention with the resurrection of the dire wolf. But now that they're back, here are five more species due for a big comeback in your lifetime. The first on this list is one of the most famous, being declared extinct in 1982. The thylacine, otherwise known as the Tasmanian or the Tassie tiger, was a beautiful predator from Australia and the surrounding islands, and sadly started to decline once colonisers invaded as they were using the thylacine for their meat, and they also thought that this wolf-like creature was killing sheep. And due to this, the population declined from 5,000 to zero in a matter of decades. And the last known thylacine died on September the 7th, 1936, in a Tasmanian zoo. And whilst people have claimed to see them, this is the only footage we have, for now. The team behind the direwolf, Colossal Biosciences, plan to bring them back. Using de-extinction technology, they want to use the closest living relative to create an embryo and repopulate. This would re-establish an apex predator and correct the current biodiversity crisis in Australia. Progress is going well and we could soon see them back. The next species is another project from Colossal. I think you'll be hearing a lot of them from now on. The dodo, extinct for almost 400 years, could be revived similar to the thylacine. Another similarity is that colonisers were responsible for their extinction. A mixture of hunting plus invasive species put the final nail in the dodo's coffin. And the main reason for their resurrection is due to their cultural significance in Mauritius. But the risks that killed them are still present. Crab-eating macaques and black rats, history could repeat itself. And if they go extinct again, do we just continuously de-extinct them? Who knows? But what we do know is, they'll definitely be back at least once. Number three shows that de-extinction isn't a new concept. In 2003, we had the world's first successful de-extinction. The Pyrenean Ibex went extinct in 2000, with the final individual, Celia, being hit by a falling tree. Luckily for Celia, her DNA was collected, and three years later, her exact clone was born, and lived a long and happy life. What was that? It, it died? Oh. Well, yeah, sadly, Celia V2 died within minutes of birth due to lung complications. But... It is still the first de-extinction, and also the first double extinction. So maybe successful de-extinction isn't the right term for this one. Next is a prehistoric herbivore, known for its ability to shape landscapes and its impressive pointed protrusions. Nope, it's not that one. Yet. It's the auric. Extinct since the 1600s, this beefy vegan was everywhere in Europe but competition with domesticated cows, as well as livestock diseases, sent them to the grave. And you might think, we have cows now, so why do we need more? Well, they are a keystone species, which could provide a well-needed boost to grasslands by spreading seeds and disturbing soil. To do this, a process called backbreeding is used, meaning species with select traits will breed. Their babies will then breed with other selective stock, and so on, until we have something which resembles the historic auric. Is it technically de-extinct? No, but it's really close. Lastly, the one you've been waiting for. The passenger pigeon. Nah, joking. It's the woolly mammoth. The species that gets everyone excited. Because who wouldn't be excited by a furry elephant? Not that kind. In 2023, the world was shocked by news that a company were going to bring back the mammoth. Finally, my dream of working in Jurassic Park was one step closer to becoming a reality. Fast forward to 2025, and that company, Colossal Biosciences, told you you'd hear the name again, announced they had secured the DNA, secured the tech, and now had the funding. And with this came the goal that the first woolly mammoth will be born by 2028. And unlike the dodo, this project will hopefully have a worldwide impact. The hope is that the wild mammoths could help fight climate change by reducing plant growth, restoring the mammoth step, and preventing over 1.5 billion tonnes of carbon 
which is currently trapped in the permafrost from being released due to global warming. Colossal claim that restoring the past can lead to a better future, and the mammoth could quite well achieve this. Now you've heard all five, are you excited for a future without extinction? And if you could revive any species, who would you choose? Leave your answer in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.